Hi guys, this is Terry with Futures.io. Today we have a presentation from Ryan and Brian of CTS Futures that will introduce multi-level order entry and Android charts. If you have questions, you can type them into the question box and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the event. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do us a favor and give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the webinar. It helps us a lot. Also, feel free to comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. Without further delay, I'll hand it over to Ryan and Brian. Okay, Terry, am I good? You should be. Show my screen. Does that look good, Terry? Yeah, looks good. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Terry, for setting this up, and also for Mike. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to uh, give us the time and let us show you some of the new features that uh, we've come out with. Um, for those of you who are familiar with CTS, we've had some web and mobile devices in the past. Uh, this is our first release of a true app uh, that you can get from the Google Play Store. And what you see on my screen now is uh, we have this emulator program so I can show you my phone uh, via this webinar. Uh, there'll be some things that I can't do, uh, like a pinching or pulling apart of a, of a chart. Uh, I'll try to demonstrate that as best I can, but some things I can't do uh, through this emulator. Um, and as Terry said, if you have questions, you know, feel free to shoot them out. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that chat box and try to respond. So to get started, what you see, this would be you know, what, what I would see on the full length of my phone uh, if you guys were looking at it. And this is just a basic quote page um, that I can sit here and click and add uh, different products as I see fit. If I wanted to add the bonds, I click on that, click OK, and you see it shows up here at the bottom. Once I've done that, uh, I can hold my mouse down on that, or in case it is a phone, just be your finger, and I could change the market, put a different month on there, and it, it changes just, just that quickly. <clears throat> we also have multiple pages you can add. On the phone, obviously, I would do like a finger swipe. Here, I'm just going to click my mouse over, and you can see that I have a second page created. Um, if you wanted to create an additional page, I could go up here to my properties button to manage pages, hit the plus sign and I could just create, I'll call it new, put it up there, click on it, and open it. And once it's open, I'll click up here again and I can start adding products. So as I do that, I'm just typing in symbols. You'll see a lot more on this list than you would on a live. This is my simulation environment. So we have a few more markets that, that pop up. Um, so you see once I do that, now I have three distinct quote pages set up. And with these quote pages, you're seeing very basic information. You're seeing the bid, the offer, the last traded price, and then you're seeing a net change for the day. I have a green light indicating the market's open. Uh, for example, corn is in pre-market, so you'll see an orange light. And then if it was closed, you would see red. Uh, and then looking at this, I can then click on it or my, with my mouse or with my finger and pull up a depth of market. So as far as trading is concerned, if you're familiar excuse me, with CTS or most platforms, you'll see this market depth type of layout where I can come up here to my volume. I can change my volume thing I want, say OK, go down here and add to the market and say OK again. And if you notice when I did that, I got that prompt box that comes up. You don't have to use that. It can go straight in like some of you probably have your desktop version set up. Uh, but on the phone, just to make sure you're clicking on the right thing with a, a fat finger mistake, um, we set things defaulted to, to a prompt. But once it's in there, it's like a normal order. I can hold on to it and then I can drag and drop it to a different price. And again, confirm that to say OK. I can left click to cancel it. Again, say OK. Uh, if I want to put something in the market, and go ahead and get filled on that. Drag that up and get that filled. So you notice on my screen here that now I'm a net two, gives me my P&L. If I want to see my distinct orders, I can come in here, oops, go down to orders, and then choose my filled tab. So I can see exactly what I have filled for the day. We also give you the options to see your all book, which will give you everything for the day. So you can see there's a lot of flexibility in, in the app. I can scroll down here and see the stuff I did earlier today uh, that you can go ahead and choose between what book you like to, to look at all the time. Uh, same thing with my positions. You saw the positions on 
my ladder, but I can also see everything I'm looking at today. So when I'm sitting there trading, I only see one at a time. Like when I go to my quotes and I go here, I see my position for the minis. But if I want to see everything I have for the day, I can just come to positions here, look at all, and then see the different products I've traded for the day. So all this is just like the desktop is, is updating dynamically. You don't have to do anything. You have to add this. It's going to calculate and do it all for you. So go back to quotes and go back to S&Ps. Um, to show you some more features on, on this contract window is um, I have the total trade of volume for the day in the lower left, or lower right, pardon me, and then I have the low for the day and high for the day. Uh, and then just like the quote board is showing you the last traded price and quantity um, along with the bids and offers. <clears throat> as far as order types are concerned, you know, I have defaulted to limit, but if I click that down there, I can, I do have some stop options. So if I do a stop and I have a one lot, I can click up here, click OK. So now I have my stop working up there. And just like a limit, I can hold that and I can move it around or left click to cancel it. So much of this is like our normal platform. A lot of the functionality of the order types you see and what you do to, to use them is, is very similar. Um, and also with that is if I put in some multiple orders here, I can use this to cancel all. And then also with my current position now will be a long two. I can hit my flatten button and say okay to flatten. And it'll go ahead and sell me two. And again, if I want to see exactly what that did, I go to my orders, go to my fills, and then I'll see my micro order there um, filling my S&Ps. So you can always go back and see a complete track of what you've done for the day, uh, similar to the desktop. So one of the newest things that uh, we've added is is charting. Um, so once I look at the um, the trading stuff here, I can click on my chart button at the upper left-hand corner, right-hand corner. If you notice that that changes back to depth, I can go back and forth. So when I look at the chart, you know, a basic chart can come up, uh, candlesticks. I can go in here to configure chart, general. Where's my... Uh, So I go into configured chart, and I'm just trying to change it to a different type of bar so you can see. And it changes the bar. Um, so you can see on there we have candlesticks and, and high-low close. And just like our normal platform, you know, we have a bunch of studies. So as I click on this and say add study, you'll see a list of them here. As I click, simply do an overlay, do Bollinger Bands, left click on or a right touch with your um, with your finger and the Bollinger Bands are on there. And I can still scroll back this chart as far back as I want to. I can put crosshairs on there to um, specify a, a, a point to make sure I'm seeing the right price. Sometimes on the phone it's hard to see so you can use that. So you can toggle those on and off. Oops. Um, and then the second thing that we've added recently to the charts is actually the trading off the chart like we have on our desktop version. So if you notice when I click that symbol there that I get a, um, a blue and red chart like I do on the depth. And it works the, in the same exact way. If I click down here, it comes up and says, do I want to buy one nine and a quarter? I say yes. So now I have that working order in there. And much like I was dragging and dropping on the depth, I can hold this for a second and then drag that down there and confirm a new price. Also, if I want to cancel that, I can click on it. It gives me my X, and I can get out of that. So very similar to the depth of market trading that we've always had, it's just that we add another feature where you actually have the trading uh, as part of the charting feature. So you can really stay on the charts majority of the time and see exactly what you're doing. Because the other part we did was actually put the Xs on there for the fills you got. So yes, you could always go back to your order book like I did originally, but you can also see on the chart exactly what you've been doing. So for example, if I click above the market here, I'll go and get filled on that. Then I can put an order in to get out of that. I can drag and drop that as well. And then if I want to hold that, cancel it. And like I did before, I can use my flatten button and go ahead and get out of that trade. 
Uh, I can also come down here and add studies, but uh, underneath the price and volume, oops, the volume, and then underneath it, I can still do an oscillator down below. So you can see that it has a lot of powerful tools in terms of overlays you can do on the chart, uh, volume bars at the bottom of the chart, and also do um, some RSI stochastics below. Every time you add a study, they're, they're configurable. Uh, so if I went in here to say uh, remove study, I can remove them, but I can also come in here and say configure chart, click on my Bollinger Bands, and now I can sit there and um, change this type. Uh, see, I'll change it to a weighted price. and just reconfigure the uh, Bollinger Bands. I don't know how much you can see on the screen. Obviously, I'll depend on what kind of phone you have and the, and the size of your phone. You'll see more or less of, of the graphics. I can move these around a little bit, but sometimes this emulator, you don't have a lot of shown um, space to show it. And like I said before, the one thing that's really difficult for me to demonstrate or in fact impossible is I can't pinch. So this scale over here and the chart inside there, I could pinch that to um, shrink it in to make it smaller so you can see more data or widen it so you see bigger bars and more clear data of what the price is. Any, any, any questions on that charting part? Yeah, I have a couple here. Um, sure. How do you scroll back in time on the chart without clicking the chart and dragging it? Uh, you mean they want to go back like this? Yes. Do you have to drag the chart to do that, or is there another way to uh, scroll back through time? Uh, yeah, you're either going to scroll or you're going to use your fingers and pinch it. And as you, as you pinch in to make it smaller, that's obviously going to show you more on your screen. Um, so, yeah, either, either pinch or scroll back. Okay. Uh, is it possible to have the stop which cannot be moved once it's set? I'm sorry, say that again, Terry. Is it possible to have the stop which cannot be moved once it's set? Oh, like your order to put a stop in the market? Yeah. So basically, once I do this, it's sitting there, and the only way, I mean, obviously, if you touched it, you have to actually hold it for about a second. Like, if you notice how that highlighted, then yeah. I can move it. So if that's what you're talking about, there's, there's no way for me to take that feature away, but it's, it's a pretty conscious effort to have to hold that for a second yeah. and then move it. If you just glance over it or click it with your finger real fast, you know, chances are if you click with your finger like a, a quick touch, you're going to put the cancel message up. So okay. it's probably not going to move it as much as it's going to cancel it. Okay. And again, um, that, that's another reason, Terry, why we kind of defaulted the, yeah. uh, the app to be the prompt. So anytime you do touch something you didn't mean to, like if I click here to cancel, I just simply say no. Okay. Uh, is there any kind of OCO orders in the app? Uh, th th there's not, but we, we have intentions to add. Okay, them. okay. Um, a couple questions I have personally. Uh, what version of Android does this app work with? 4.2. Okay, so 4.2 and newer? Yeah, yeah, okay. 4.2 or higher. Okay. Uh, how stable is the app in turn on most phones? Um, you know, we've gotten great response back from our early on beta testers, and then we released it. Um, it's much, much more stable than our previous versions. You know, we've had guys put their, you know, phones to sleep or put it down and do something else on it and come back and still see the prices ticking away and see their data. So we've had some really, really good success with a number of different types of phones. But um, overall, I, I would say we're, we're quite pleased with the stability. Okay. Okay. Uh there is a question, let's see. I am from Brazil and I use eSignal as a data feed provider. They provide me with data from BMF Exchange. Is it possible to use this tool to trade BMF futures? Uh, it would be, we, uh, CTS had BMF acquired a few years ago and um, end up taking it off as we had very little people using it. So um, yes, if we have the demand, we could add BMF back in there. Uh, but okay. as of right now, no. All right, Big Mike has a question. What about alerts? Can you set certain alerts for prices 
or when an order is filled, and do those alerts work when the phone is sleeping? Uh, you can definitely set your fill sounds um, under alerts and notification. Go through and do you know fills, partial fills, etc., cancellations, rejections. You know to get a ding on your phone. Uh, does it come through when the? Uh, I want to say the answers. Yeah, as as long as you still have that connection, even if your phone's asleep, you're going to get the uh, the okay. ding, the the ring for a, a fill or a partial fill or or what have you. Okay. Is there any way to set like price alerts? I wanted to know the market got to a certain price. No, um, we have not done that yet. In fact, we don't even have that on our desktop version. Something that's on our list, but um, and it may come here if we do on the desktop version. But as of right now, no. Okay. I think that's all the questions at the moment. Okay. I'm just going to actually log off that for one second and go back to my desktop version for a template demonstration. We can always go back to the Android if, if someone has additional questions. So the second thing that we were going to discuss today is doing some what we call an order templates. Um, multi-exit OCO, uh, different target, what some people might call them. So if I look at my S&Ps, for example, we have a feature here on top that I can add to get this drop down menu, and it's really to create a template. And so when I click that button, I basically get a blank template that comes up, and I get to choose what I want to create in terms of um, we have two different things. One we're calling a standard batch, and one we're calling a multi-exit OCO. So for years we've had people ask us, we could always do an OCO and some auto OCO, but they had limits in terms of um, just one level. So now we're basically putting the power in the trader's hand that when he wants to create reason we decided to do it in what we call this template form for a couple reasons. Number one, you can save them. So if you're, if you're constantly doing very similar things, you can save multiple templates and go back to those quite easily, and, uh, and I'll show you that here. So if I really wanted to do, let's say, um, a five-lot sell, and once I did that, I wanted to go five ticks up the market and get out of two, go up two more ticks, and get out of two more, and go up two more, and get out of one. And then down below, I'm going to do something similar. I'll do two here, two here, and one here. And once I say okay to that, in my drop down menu, oh, let me, I should go back to that, and uh, I was going to name that five lot. So now in my drop down menu, if I had, I'll create multiple templates in a minute here, but you can see that I have it created, and what it does is, when I go to put that order in, it's going to work my five lot. If you watch, I'll drag this down and just make it get filled. As I get filled in that five lot, you'll see that I have my stops and my limits go in. Um, once that happens, they become regular orders that I can drag and drop like I normally would. I can cancel one. So it has a lot of flexibility of once you put it in. Now, I made that get filled. Um, but I can drag these up here, and you notice that once I get filled in this two lot, it will cancel two of my remaining ones. So it keeps everything in sync. Um, if I want to get out of the whole thing, I, I certainly could cancel all my legs and then handle, you know, doing something manually. Oops. I had that set to go off again. So I can always change it and get out manually, but the order template allows me to, you know, pick and choose what I want to do. Now, once I set that template, I can always come back here and change this. If I wanted to you know, go back here and make that a one, come back here and change this to a one, that's perfectly fine. I'm still balanced. If you watch this, if I try to make this unbalanced by making this a three lot, when I say okay, it's not going to let me. So when you're doing a multi-exit OCO, it's going to make you do a balanced order. So I'll change that back to two and say okay. The other thing to notice on the template is the reason we have the prices um, is that don't think of these as prices. This is just a, a zero starting point of where you want to put 
that order, and then this is the number of ticks away from the market that you're going to put your buys and stops and buys or sells. Um, so instead of having to look at the, the the depth each time and pick out a particular price, it's really just setting this, saying okay, and then when you put that order in, then you know that as soon as it gets filled, you have numerous ones. And I can also obviously cancel that and and do on the buy side as well. And when that gets filled, I see you know a similar structure come into place. Um, so then again, if I have that, I'll leave that working for a second. If I want to come here, I can then hit my plus sign again to create a new one. I want to do another multi-exit. comes on here, and this time I'll do a 10 lot. I'll come over here, and I'll just sell 5 and 5. And again, it doesn't matter what products you're using this for. Um, that's the reason we like the template ideas, not the things that it's a specific for one product that we could sit there and if I bring up another market here, go here, that's the one I just created. I'll call this one Tim Lot. So the nice part about it is you can have different things set up. I was even experimenting with ones earlier, you know, calling them E-mini 5 or NQ5, just so I would know which one I was doing. If I have a different strategy for trading crude oil or Brent versus E-minis or NASDAQ or bonds or notes, go ahead and label them like that. So when you look at your drop down menu, you're going to see all the options you have. You can select it, put your quantity in there, and then just trade. And that way you have each one set up the way you like it. The other feature we added, if you notice down here at the bottom, is that we have a ratio mode. So because I did a 10 lot, I don't have that checked, which means when I come here and you saw and I put it on one lot, it does a 10 lot for me. If I were to change that to ratio mode and say OK, I can now change this to a 2 lot. Let me cancel that first one. And now when I put that in, I can do a 20. So when you set up these templates, you really have the, another level of flexibility to choose whether you always want to do that five lot or ten lot, whatever you initially set up the template for, or go ahead and click on the ratio version and know that now you can control uh, what that volume wants to be. And instead of changing a new template, you can just put a two lot up here in your volume and then go ahead and make that trade. It just gives a, another level of flexibility you can have if you don't want to set up too many templates. And so with that, let me just show quickly um, a standard batch, uh, call it a standard batch five. The, the difference really between the standard batch and multi-order exit OCO is that the batch is very uh, flexible. You don't have to be balanced like you do in an OCO. This is basically something you might use maybe on a Fed number, a grain number, some other type of economic news where you might just say, hey, if the Fed comes out and tightens, I like to do this or that. So what this one is, I could come here, put in my five lot, and then it's very flexible what I do. If I have a theory, if I could sell five here, uh, if it goes down, I might want to buy two back here. I might want to do another stop up here. It really is quite flexible. If you notice that, that I'm not balanced there, five by six over there, I can say OK, and it allows me to do it. So there, there is no balance in the OCO. OCO is strictly the old-fashioned way of, hey, if I put in a, a five lot, you know, I'm going to do a five lot stop and a five lot buy with my same quantities. I'm not going to be unbalanced. So with that, the same thing works. I can put it in here. So if you notice, the difference, too, is when I enter that order, there's my five lot sale, my three stops up there and my limits on there, they go in right away, whereas the OCOs, you know, the, the, the stops and the, the limits did not go in until, you know, after a fill took place. Any questions on, on those two features, either the, the standard batch or the multi-exit OCO? I don't see any at the moment. Okay, I am going to drag those down and get that film. Show you how those go away. It's going to cancel these. Uh, I'm going to let Ryan step in for a moment. He's going to discuss some of our sniper features. Switch so we don't get the feedback.
All right, hi guys. Howdy. I'm going to show you a couple things real quick here with the sniper. Um, basically, this is uh, our version of a spreader. It's not quite a spreader. It's not an auto spreader. We're not doing cancel replace. Uh, we're just waiting for the conditions to be met, and then we're putting the orders in once the conditions are there. So we'll put the leg orders in as a result. So a quick example, just going to run through the Brent CL here while we got a couple of minutes left before everything closes. Um, this is a template that we have that has the ICE Brent and the NYMEX CL contracts combined in one. So you can see here, obviously, this is the June contract for both. Got the spread here for it. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new one from this template just to show you real quick what this looks like. So you can name it whatever you want. This has a, kind of a random name here. Let's just say new. In the legs here, you can add multiple legs. You can do different quantities on each, different ratios, uh, different multipliers to get the math to what you're looking for. For this, it's fairly straightforward, just one to one. Uh, we've already got Brent in here on the buy side, uh, the CL contract on the sell side. And then on the reverse strategy, what this is going to do is if you get rejected on something, uh, this is going to try to get you out. So uh, say you get into the CL, but the ICE side gets rejected for whatever reason. We're going to automatically, if you have this enabled uh, by checking this off, we're automatically going to put an order in to try to get you out of that leg that you did get. So we're going to leave that off for now. Uh, we also have some advanced pricing that you can do to adjust the math a little bit more on here, but we'll ignore that for the moment. Create this. And since this is identical to the template that we had, you'll see it's basically the same data here. We can also chart this, open up a chart. And just like all of our other charts, you can quickly flip through all of the different expirations. So we can look at July, Augie, we'll stick with June as it's pretty liquid. And then we've got a couple other things here. You can do a market profile on it, uh, pretty much anything that, that you want. Market history, that'll kind of give you a track record of what we compile as trades for this. Obviously, it's a synthetic spread. So when you have the two legs, we're, we're looking at a 50 millisecond gap and saying if the CL and the Brent trade within that 50 millisecond gap, we count that as a trade. Uh, we're looking at adding some customization to that where you can set that width to whatever you want. So you could potentially have uh, a smoother chart data for less liquid legs. Uh, but right now it's 50 millisecond gap. So it, it gets a good amount of the trades for liquid contracts. And then let's see here, quote snapshot. Uh, the idea here is this will show you how we combine the different legs to get the spread prices that you're looking at. Uh, and you can click on this. It gives you an idea of the math that's involved to translate this into the spread that you want. And there's a lot of customization here, a lot of functionality. Um, you can see here that these are some of the parameters that are involved in this particular spread. And for the most part, if you slap two things together that are one to one, it's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot of customization required. But as you get to more complex spreads, obviously you do have a lot of options available in order to get exactly what you're looking for. Uh, and something else, we're always adding new features to this and any new um, suggestions or comments that you have are more than welcome because this is a fairly new product. We want to make sure it's something that's useful for the users and something that hopefully can make you guys a lot of money. So what else do we have here? Spread matrix, uh, a lot of these things this functionality that we have uh, elsewhere in the system, uh, this is part of the advanced package, I believe. And from here, at the moment you pick the particular leg that you want to do a spread matrix for, shows you all the different expirations compared to each other. And then based on this, you can send these back into the sniper, create a new synthetic strategy in the sniper. Um, you can do new market profile via the sniper for any of these different combinations. So it's just a kind of an easier way to combine some of this stuff. Um, not too much more that I want to show you on, on this. Just uh, if there are any questions, let me know. I'm not seeing anything in the chat right now.
Oh yeah, and Brian's just reminded me, we have two options for the sniper right now. One is a charting only, where you're not gonna put in any orders in this. Uh, it's just gonna be to create the custom spreads and view it as different charts, and you could obviously put studies on these charts. Uh, and then the other option, which is $100 a month add-on, is to also do the trading for it. So that'll allow you to place orders in any of the custom spreads that you do. Uh, you'll have all the same functionality that you have from other trade entry that we offer. Uh, plus, you get the charting on top of that. And if I missed it, the charting is a $50 add-on. So $50 for charting only, $100 for trading and charting. Just one quick question. I'm assuming this is a month to month. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This it's a a monthly fee. It's not a one time thing. Okay. If y'all have any questions, please feel free to post them in the questions box. Yeah, and I apologize. I don't think we're seeing anything come up. So if if uh, any users out there do type any questions, please just let us know. Okay, I got a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you host this or does it reside locally? Sure, this is client side. So this is a client side spreader. Um, what's gonna happen here, say you get disconnected, all of your orders that are on the trade sniper get pulled. And if it's a brief disconnect or if you just logged off and said I want to ignore all this stuff, it pulls everything out. But the next time that you log in, you will see all of the orders that were pulled will come up in a new window right on top, and it'll ask you if you want to resubmit them. So if you're logging off for the day, but it's something, you know, you're always trying to say, uh, pay one under and sell one over on some spread that's usually even, you know, you come in the next day, you can easily put those back in, or if you just get disconnected, your internet goes down, whatever it may be, once you log back in, you'll be able to get right back into it put all the orders back in that you want. You can check them off one by one. Uh, so we do have that functionality to help you out, but it is all uh, client side. Okay. Do you have somewhere where uh, customers can submit requests for the app or for the uh, desktop platform? Yeah, they can always uh, just send us an email support at ctsfutures.com. Okay. Um, also, they could hop on our Twitter or our Facebook, uh, post anything they want there. Uh, it's just going to be at CTS Futures. But support is the best thing. That's a pretty direct conduit back up to the developers from there. So anything new, uh, specifically Android chart studies, you know, we're, we've got a good amount on there right now, but we're looking to add a lot more. And we're trying to do it based on the feedback that we get. So if somebody's missing something that they love, uh, we really want to hear from it. We'll try to get that one on there first and just keep going down the line. So, uh, yeah. Speaking of that, can you show us what studies are on the Android app at the moment? Yeah, let me hop back in here. Maybe that way they can see if it's something that they Sure, yeah, we'll, we'll run through a few. All right, so for overlays, we've got Bollinger Bands, uh, Exponential Moving Averages, Whole Moving Averages, Least Squares, uh, Linear Weighted Moving Average, Parabolic SAR, Price Channels, Settlement Study, which is basically just going to put a line for the settlement price on there. A uh, bunch of moving averages here, Simple, Smooth, Triangular. And then for Underlay and Price Volume, basically this is the same thing, this volume. Just one is an underlay and one is, so here's the underlay, I just added that. Add the other one that's pretty straightforward um, and as you add more of these under studies here they just have tabs and you can swipe through the tabs okay uh, let's add some more here so money flow got these ones here oscillators and I'm assuming you know if somebody really needs to uh, we could go back or we can screenshot these we could, actually we should probably add these to the website we'll get that going today yeah. Uh, just so the guys know what's what's available there. 
um, and they can compare it to what we have on the desktop. And it's just going to be a matter. Eventually, we're going to have everything that we offer on the desktop on the Android. Okay. Uh, it's just you know the squeaky wheel gets grease. So yeah. speak up now, and and you'll get to the front of the line. Okay, we have another question. Uh, do you integrate to third-party brokers aside from CTS features? Yeah, so we are not actually um, a brokerage. We're just the platform. So okay. most of the big uh, brokerage firms out there we do hook up to. So if, if anybody does have a specific question on is there, far, is there particular uh, firm available with us, we can answer that. But yeah, here's uh, our website that offers most of the a list of most of the firms that we partner with. So this is just ctsfutures.com, and it's the customers link at the top of the page. Okay. Yeah, and if uh, if anybody does have any more questions with it. They can always talk to us at uh, support at ctsfutures.com, and also you can sign up for our sim. It's a free two-week simulator. It's from our homepage there, ctsfutures.com. And on there, right now, the uh, order templates that we showed are still in beta, but we should have that released in live by the end of this week, if not later today. Uh, the sniper stuff is all in live, and the Android has been live for a little while now. So all of that stuff will be available to anyone that signs up for the sim. So you can test it out for yourselves. Um, if you've had a SIM with us before, we won't be able to give you the live data again. That's an exchange rule. But we will be able to turn your SIM back on, and you can test out some of the new features that we have. And I'm assuming you can uh, do the SIM trading in the app like you're doing with the emulator? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the app is available on the SIM. Okay. Uh, can you all shoot me that uh, link to that app, and I'll put it on the thread? So if anyone wants to get a SIM and try it. Sure. Um, I'll show you this. So this uh, this is the link to register for the SIM. Uh, I'll shoot that to you in a minute. Okay. And then from there, once you register, the easiest way is uh, you'll get the registration email that will have the links to download the app okay. uh, and download the desktop application as well. But if you were just searching for it, say you're already a user and you want it, if you go to the Google Play Store or the Amazon App Store, and search for T4 Mobile. You'll find it that way. Okay. Okay, uh, any more questions from the attendees? Okay, I think that's it. Uh, do you all have anything else? or? Uh, no, I think that's it for now. Okay. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you for coming. Um, oh, sorry, I just got a question. Is it only futures or can you trade stocks too? Uh, it's only futures and options on futures. We do not have stocks at this time, unfortunately. Okay. Is there any plans for stocks in the future? Uh, we have looked at it. It's always been something that we're asked of. Um, we'd love to tie in our functionality uh, that we offer for the futures and futures options for stocks. Uh, but we don't have a timeline on it right now. We don't we don't have it in the pipeline. Let's put it that way. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, great presentation. Thank you all very much. Uh, I will close out the webinar now. Thank you all. All right. Thank you.